dash eight factoring by grouping. So our objective for this section is to factor higher degree polynomials by grouping. And some of the polynomials of a degree greater than two can be factored using this technique. Okay, so in eight dash six, we factor polynomials, sorry, trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. How do we do that? We rewrote the middle term as the sum of two monomials. Then we group the terms in pairs, factor the GCF from each pair, and look for that common binomial factor that both of them now contained. This process, when we did this, is called factoring by grouping. And we can not only use it to help us factor uh, trinomials like ax squared plus bx plus c, but we can extend this technique to higher degree polynomials, which is what we're going to do right now. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. So to factor this cubic polynomial, uh, 3n to the third minus 12n squared plus 2n minus 8. Now, there are ways that we could factor something with a cubic in it uh, that doesn't require grouping, but it is much, much, much harder. Okay, So we're going to stick with uh, this easy method right here. Okay, Just like we did before, we're going to look at these first two terms. And we're going to say, what do those two terms have in common? Well, both of them have a 3n squared. And if we factor that out, we're left with just an n minus 4. OK, then we look at these two things. And what do they have in common? Well, the only thing they have in common is a 2. And what's left over is an n minus 4. Now, you know this technique will work is if these two binomials that are left over are exactly the same, exactly the same. Not even a plus uh, or a minus that's different. Okay, They have to be 100% the same. And what we can do then is we can use the distributive property backwards. Or we can factor both of those two terms out of the expression. And we're left with 3n squared plus 2 in parentheses times the n minus 4. Okay. And if I were to use the distributive property, I would multiply the 3n times both of these and the 2 times both of these. What is what that says right there? And then this is my factored form of the expression. 3n squared plus 2 times n minus 4. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could first, outside, inside, last, foil these two together, and I should get the same thing that I started with wish I did. Okay, let's look at that again. Okay, so let me rewrite this. 8t to the third plus 14t squared plus 20t plus 35. Okay, the first term has two in common. 2t, 2t squared. And what's left over? 4t plus 7, right? Because 2t times 4t is 8t to the third. 2t squared times 4t is 8t to the third. 2t times 7 is 14t. Plus, what does a 20 and a 35 have in common? 20t and a 35 have in common? Both of those have a 5. And that's a 4 times t left over plus 7. And look at that. Those two, bi those two binomials are the same. So my answer is 2t squared plus 5 times 4t plus 7. How is this factoring method used in problem 1, like the method used in 8.6, right? Well, we're going to use the same general technique. Look at what's common with these two. Look at what's common with these two. Factor them out and then separate it into two factors. How is it different is that uh, well, we're starting with a f uh, cubic, first of all. Uh, these two terms are not the same, right? One's a t squared, one's a t. And 
these two terms didn't come from something that we had to figure out. We already started with a problem uh, ready to be factored. In the previous thing, we had to sort of figure out what the right factors are to use. Okay. Uh, before we factor by grouping, you want to make the problem easier on yourself. You want to factor out any common factor uh, from all the terms, if there is one. Okay. So is there a common factor between all four of these terms? Yes, it is 4 times Q. And if I do that, I now have Q to the third minus 2Q squared plus 6 Q minus, sorry, plus 3Q minus 6. Okay. Now, if you see, it's a Q, if you see the third power somewhere and the question says to factor this, this is the only technique that you can use for now, okay, until you get a little bit more advanced, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to factor this by grouping first. The common factor with both of those is Q squared. And we're left with Q minus 2. The common factor between both of those is a 3. And we're left with a Q minus 2. Well, that's good because now we can group everything together. And because this is going to be multiplication, polynomial multiplication, I don't need these outside parentheses anymore because it doesn't matter what order I multiply the terms together. So let's just put the 4Q in the front, the Q squared plus 3, and the Q minus 2. And that would be my answer. Let's try another one. Factored form of 6H to the 4th plus 9H to the 3rd plus 12H squared plus 18H. What do they all have in common? Well, unfortunately, the 9 doesn't have a factor of 6, but it looks like they all have a factor of 3 and an H. When I factor that out, I get 2H to the 3rd plus 3H squared plus 4H plus 6. Okay. Now, let's look what both of those have in common. Well, they don't have any numbers in common, but... They do both have an H squared in common, and we're left with 2H plus 3. Both of these have a 2 in common, and guess what we're left with? 2H plus 3. Okay, That's good. If these two terms did not match exactly, either this method doesn't work or we did something wrong. And in this section, that means we did something wrong. 3H times h squared plus 2 times 2h plus 3 would be my factored form and my answer. You can sometimes factor to find possible expressions for length, width, and height of a rectangular prism. If we perhaps wanted to use this to solve word problems, we could do it. So the toy shown below is made of several ladder bars that can fold together to form a rectangular prism or unfold to form a ladder. What expressions can represent the dimensions of the toy when it's folded up? Use factoring. Okay, so this is going to combine finding a common factor and then using a technique like we have done in the past. So the volume is 6x to the third plus 19x squared plus 15x. All right, well, first step is I want to factor this into three things multiplied together, length times width times height. First thing I notice is that all has a common factor of x. 6x squared plus 19x plus 15. Okay, this only has two ter three terms, and it is x squared. So we're going to have to fall back to one of the previous techniques that I've had. And I'm going to multiply a times c together. 6 times 15 gives me 90. So I want to find the factors of 90 
that add to 19. Okay, factors of 90. 1 and 90. That's 91. No good. Okay. 2 and 45. That's 47. No good. 3 and 30. That's 33. No good. 6 and 15 is 21. No good, but closer. Uh, 9 times 10 is 19. And there we go. So, what does that mean? That means, if we remember, that I'm going to separate the 19x into 6x squared plus 9x plus 10x plus 15. And now I'm going to use the grouping technique. So my volume is still going to be, this x is going to be out front. It never does anything. The common factor between 6x squared and 9x is 3x. What's left over? 2x plus 3. Common factor between 10x and 15 is 5. What's left over? 2x plus 3. If these two were not the same, we did something wrong. Let's get a little bit more room here. Okay. And so my final expression is going to be x times 3x plus 5 times 2x plus 3. And since volume is length times width times height, the possible, dim the possible dimensions are x, 3x plus 5, and 2x plus 3. Right. Let's try that again. Okay. Rectangular prism has a volume of 60x to the third plus 34x plus 4. So let's write that down. 60x squared, x to the third, plus 34x squared, plus 4x. Okay, well, unfortunately, 4 doesn't go into 34, so I can't factor out a 4, but I can factor out a 2, and I can also factor out an x. Try to always factor as much as possible to get these numbers a little smaller. Uh, 34 divided by 2 is a 17x plus 2. Okay, so remember our technique here. This is my volume. Okay, so my technique here is to multiply A times C together, and that's 60, and to find the factors of 60 that add to 17. Both signs need to be the same. Uh, they're both going to be positive. So we're going to add to 17. Okay. Factors of 60 are 1 and 60. That's 61. No good. 2 times 30. That's 32. No good. It's always good to check them all, right? Even if you can already see the answer, right? It's good to go through them all. Okay. So 3 times 20 is 23. And we're getting closer. Uh, 60. 4 times 15 is 60, and that is 19. No good. Uh, 5 times 12 is 60, and guess what 5 plus 12 is? 17. Okay, so we don't have to go any further than that. All right, our technique is to separate the 17x into 5x plus 12x plus 2. Okay. Now I'm going to find the common factor between the first two terms, and that is a 5x, which leaves me with 6x plus 1. And then the common factor between the next two is 2, Oops. which leaves me with 6x plus 1. Okay. These two terms are the same. That is a good thing. And so my answer, my expression, becomes 2x 
times 5x plus 2 times 6x plus 1. Okay. So here's a summary of what to remember as we factor polynomials. First step, factor out the greatest common factor, the GCF. Make the problem easier on yourself. Take anything that you can take out. If the polynomial has two or three terms, look for differences of two squares, perfect square trinomials, or a pair of binomial factors if we have to do uh, the factoring technique like we just did. If the polynomial has four or more terms, group the terms and factor to find common binomial factor. As a final check, Make sure there are no common factors other than one in your answer. Okay. So, uh, I don't want to go through all these again. Um, for number two, or for number one, we can factor out a four, right? So we can factor out a four r squared to leave me with five r plus two. And I could factor out a 3 to leave me with 5r plus 2. And to give me my answer of 4r squared plus 3 and 5r plus 2. Now, no common factors in either one of these. That was that last uh, check. And if you can factor out something, you should. Okay. Um, let's jump right over to number 5. Tell whether you would factor the polynomial by grouping. No. Why not? It only has three terms. Okay. And we have an x squared. Why not just find the factors of nine that add up to six? Okay. And that just happens to be a perfect square trinomial, right? Because three times three equals six, right? And negative three times negative three is positive nine. Negative three plus negative three is negative six. Number six? No. I would not factor by group. Well, actually, I take that back. Uh, yes and no. Okay. First, I would use the AC method. I would multiply the 4 times the 15 to get uh, the factors of 60 that add to 23. And if we jump back real quick to my list of factors of 60 that I just did in this got it problem, I can see that it's going to be 3 and 20. Okay. So once I had that, once I split 4w squared plus, what was it? I forgot what the factors were. 6 and 20, did I say? 3 and 20. Okay, so the factors of, uh, I would split this into 20w plus 3w plus 15. Now I would factor it by grouping. So yes, you do use grouping eventually, but not right off the bat, as opposed to number seven, when you use grouping right away. Okay, and you can tell you can use it right away because it has a exponent to the third power and it has four terms. Let's look at number eight before we finish here. Can you factor the polynomial by grouping? Well, let's try. 6q to the third plus 2q squared plus 12q minus 3. Common factor there is 2q squared, which leaves me with 3q plus 1. Common factor there is a now let's factor out a negative 3. Now, let's factor out a positive 3. And that leaves me with 4q minus 1. Unfortunately, these two are not the same. That means this technique will not work with this expression. Does that mean you cannot factor this expression? No. It just means that there is a different technique that you must use that is way more complicated and something that you will maybe learn in Algebra 2. So that was 8-8, factoring by grouping.